Alright guys, how's it going? So literally 10 seconds after I released this video, I received a comment from Technendo. And he basically writes, do you know there's an add-on that can do this for you? <laughs> of course there is. And it's called Cubester, and we'll take a look at the add-on. But I want to show you a website first of all, and this is called Tangram Height Mapper. Now essentially what it is, it's a world map and it gives you the height map data. So we'll zoom into an area that we want to export, so good old Bonnie Scotland, and I'll come to export, and I'll export out the map. And we'll quickly jump into Blender, and of course, in traditional fashion, we'll delete the cube. Now in order to install the add-on, you only need the .py file, and it comes in a couple of folders, so just grab the .py and install that via the preferences. Now personally, I'm not a fan of the UI being on the left hand side, so there's a good chance I'll actually disable the add-on once I've used it. But, in its defence, it's only recently been updated for Blender 2.8, and it actually is missing a couple of valuable features, one of these being audio format support. So you can actually take a WAV file and generate a cube mesh, but you need to use Blender 2.7, so just keep that in the back of your mind if you want to ever use it. But it's fairly easy to use, so we'll open up the image that we downloaded, which was a height map, now skip pixels, the best way I can describe this is the amount of details. So the higher the value, the lower the amount of details. So I'm actually going to put this down to something like 10. I'll leave the height to 0 0.5 and that's how high the blocks are. And the grid size 0 0.01, so each block represents one centimeter. I can invert the height map, we'll leave that normal. And we have two different mesh types and we'll take a look at the both of them. One is blocks and one is plain. So first of all, we'll do the blocks. Now show advanced, it only removes the image, but it's good to keep that. So we'll create the object. Now depending on how detailed and how large the mesh is, it can take a couple of seconds. And we get this from the block generation. Pretty damn cool, and it's certainly quicker than my method. So I'm going to delete the mesh, and I'm going to change it from blocks to a plane, and we'll create the object this time. And we get this really nice effect. Now it's completely up to you what one you want to use. I'm a fan of the blocks, so I'm going to go back to the blocks. I'm going to put the detail down to 1, and this is going to be quite intense. And I'm going to create the object again. So I thought I would be a smart ass and put the skip pixels down to 1, and it took about 2 minutes to generate the mesh. <laughs> but check this out, it's absolutely gorgeous. Now I actually want to show you what it does in the shading tab. So if we quickly jump into shading, you can see that it creates an attribute node. Now this attribute node represents the height map. And it actually takes a colour from the height map and plugs it into the base colour. So we get this really gorgeous mesh. And that's pretty much the basics of Cubestar. Now what we can do here is, if I jump into layout, we actually have an image sequence. So we can actually build up an image sequence. Now just to give you an example of how the image sequence works, it can be a little bit temperamental and it's because of the file naming convention. So what I mean by that is if you have like 0, 1, it'll actually skip the 0. So you need to be careful, so I actually used a file called bulk renamer and I renamed the files. So I'm going to actually open up an image here. So I'll go to the desktop, captures, and you can see here I'm open up 0, 1. I'll load the image sequence and it says it's found 111 images. And I'll keep this fairly low, so I'll make this 32, and I'll basically create the object. So it'll basically go through the image sequence, and it'll generate a mesh for each image. And you get this cool effect, it kind of reminds me of X-Men back in the day. And that's pretty much the basics of Cubestar. It's a good workflow tool, it's certainly quicker than the method that I used, and you can generate some gorgeous results. Do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, Follow me on Twitter if you know me. You know what to do. Peace.